Good morning guys. So the weather forecast is not meant to rain for about four hours, which is the first time in feels like two months. So I'm going to try and get the flu fitted on the van. So the river's burst its banks and it's pretty ferocious, so it's quite loud up here. Um, so I do apologise. If you follow from the beginning, you'll know that I put the burner in right at the start. I sort of get the positioning of it before putting the rest of the kitchen in, but I never got the flu in. So today's task is to try and get that in, and then I'll have heat in here, and I've just got the stove in, so then I'll be able to cook, and then it'll just be a case of getting water in, and then that'll be me, I can move in. So the very first step is going to be getting the van level, because where it's parked at the moment, it's at an angle, which isn't going to help me do this at all. I want to get it nice and flat, so that then I can basically make a plumb bob to find the centre of this, to mark the first drill hole to do the circle, and the flue to go through. to put a flue in you're going to need a few things. The flue of course, two meters will do most vans, you can only buy it in one meter pieces. A flue flashing, sometimes called a boot, these can be cut to different sizes depending on the diameter of your flue. A rain hat that stops water coming down your flue, mine is quick release so that I can easily lower it. A flue plate which is used to hide the gap between the wood and the flue itself, it will also help absorb some of the heat. A fixing kit, which includes self-tapping screws and screw caps. It also has silicon, but I won't be using that. Some fire sealant to seal the gaps in the flue, although I found this to be shite and not necessary. And butyl tape, which is used to seal the flashing to the roof. My flue sections were scratched in the shed, so I'm going to quickly spray these with some heat-proof paint. So the very first thing is going to be finding the centre of the flue on the ceiling and drilling through it. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to go for this on mine. There's another beam just here, so I'm not worried about the structure. Also, I'm never going to stand where the flue is, so it doesn't really matter about the strength of the roof. So in order to find the centre, you need a plumb bob. I haven't got one, but I did make one. <laughs> it's literally just a bottle and a bit of string. So my idea is to get the bottle so it's bang in the centre of that, and then run the string up to the roof, make a mark for a sharpie, and then drill through it. And then because I've got this uh, plate, it's going to work perfectly as a template. So what I can do is actually draw this onto cardboard so that I can then, because obviously, I don't know where the centre is, because there's nothing to draw on, but if I cut this out in cardboard, I can mark the centre and then line it up, up there. I've marked the gap slightly larger than the flue, and I'm going to cut this with angle grinder so that the flue easily fits through the gap. So there's the centre, and I've cleared that beam out of the way now, so I can go on the roof, draw a four inch circle, cut out with a jigsaw, and that'll be the hole for the flue. The whole cut and the flue just temporarily put there. I can see that did a pretty good job of the plumb bob. That looks nice and parallel. And then from that side, it looks good and in the middle. As you can see, it's an inch or two too long. <laughs> Far more than an inch or two. So I'm going to get up and mark on the flue where I want to cut it. My mum's one is 13 inches, and theirs works absolutely fine. I think you have to have a minimum flue height in order to create enough draw. Um, the taller the better, really but obviously I don't want to go making the van super tall. So I think I'm going to do about the same, probably a foot above the roof. And then I can get the rubber book, which is the cone that goes on the top, cut that to size and get that pinned in. Because the roof's all different heights, I'm just going to measure one foot up from here. And then I'll take the flue piece down and then measure from the end of the flue to get the rest accurate.
No, in the, once that one's in, another one comes from above, I won't be able to get that on. I'm just going to give that wee spray as well because it's been a wee bit marked in the shed and that. So I'll spray that and then I'll put that over the flue all the way down to here so it's just on but out of the way. While I wait for that bit of flue to dry, I'm just going to complete my moisture barrier again, which means joining up all these flaps of Reflectex. So I'm going to be cutting them and fitting them in and then cutting that hole out, taping it all up. I'm probably only going to bring it within a couple inches of that because there is plastic in this, so I'd rather keep it away from the flue by a wee bit. But I definitely need to join this up with the ceiling. All right, I've completed the moisture barrier, I've taped up every little tiny hole I could find. So it's all protected. Obviously this bit of the roof isn't insulated. Um, there's a section here that's got nothing on it. But it's going to have a hot flue coming past it quite regularly, so I'm not too worried about losing a bit of heat through there. because. There was so much heat coming off the fire. You've got to make sure you pull all your insulation back a good distance from the flue. I've given it at least six, seven inches. So now it's a case of getting that plate over that, getting the extra bit of flue on, cutting this to size, putting it over the top, and then attaching it to the roof. I've got different diameters, so I just need to find my diameter. Um, and then you just cut down to the line with a pair of scissors and then cut around that line. The straighter you get it, the better. Because if you have a kink in it, that's where the water will end up running down the outside of the flue. say before I forget, I'm going to put this over that piece of flue. I've sprayed this side so I want that side down. So that's the boot stretched over. I've probably come too far down because it comes a fair amount into there. So I'm going to try and slide it back up which is annoying. But I'm going to get up on the roof and feed it down. Can you believe it's about to rain? In fact, it is raining. Um, I'm going to quickly put a brolly on the top of that to keep the area around it dry. So this isn't your usual rain cover. I'm going to have to use it for a moment. Because I'm using butyl tape, I need to have a dry surface. So this getting wet is no use at all. Butyl tape has no dry time. It bonds as soon as it's like squashed with the screws. So, improvisation. <laughs> Looks kind of cute. <laughs> Hopefully it's not going to rain long and that'll keep that dry. As soon as it's raining, I might as well do this inside piece, which means fitting the tongue and groove back with a hole for that. I have the full panel that fits in that space. So it's these bits of wood here. Because the plate hides the wood, and I don't want the wood coming all the way to the flue, I can have the tongue and groove set back from the flue and just cut a square, which is really easy with this, because obviously each section I can just draw on which part needs to come out. And as I put them together, it'll form a nice square gap, and then the plate can go up. So I'm going to do that while it rains, because even though it wasn't meant to rain at all today, it's actually pissing it down. I'll just time lapse me cutting holes and bits out of these, fitting them in, and I'll see you once I've got the wood back up. It's actually so annoying that it's raining. It wasn't meant to rain until about four o'clock, and it started raining at half past one and hasn't stopped. It's now about quarter three. A nightmare, really, because it's only going to take maybe 15 minutes to put the tape down and screw it in. It's just going to drip all night long. I'm just going to have to leave towels down here to catch all the drips. Not much I can do about it really. Uh, I'm going to get up there today because it's a dry day and it does actually look like it's going to stay dry. Time to get that boot fastened to the roof. So the fixing kit that came with it um, has silicon in it, but in my experience silicon is not the best roof sealant at all. I find that it works well to like line the outside of stuff, but to actually have it as the foundation to protect your van from water, um, it doesn't work very well. So in my first van, the first time I put the roof vent in, I used silicon and it leaked. And then I did it again, used silicon and it leaked. And then the third time I used butyl tape, which is kind of like blue tack on a roll. Um, and then it peels off and then you just stick it down. It's not like glue, it's not like an adhesive. It's literally just like blue tack and it bonds with the roof. And then it bonds with whatever you put on top of it. And of course, because I'm going to be screwing for the roof, it's going to pinch it all together. And it presses down into that blue tack like material. Pretty simple. I'm going to go up there and I'm going to use butyl tape to try and level out all the areas so it's like one flat square because the more level the foundation that I sit the, the boot on the better because where the flue is there's quite a lot of ribs and like folded bits of metal if you know what I mean like it's all wibbly and then I'm going to put the boot down and then just use the self tapping screws that came with the kit and go straight into the roof the metal work of the roof should be enough to hold it I could have done framework like wooden framework on the inside that I screwed down into it would have pinched it a lot better. But I think there's enough of them that's not going to matter. They come with little caps in this kit that I've got. So I'll be putting the caps on top of the screws and then that'll stop water from condensing on them. 
and running down them as well. Um, you can use silicon to do that. I have done that in my old van, just dollop silicon on top of the screws, stop walking in. I probably just went and time lapsed everything I did while I was talking, so that means we're done. <laughs> All I'm going to want to do is get the metal plate up, and that's it. It's ready to be lit, which is pretty exciting. Um, I might clean the van out a bit and get it nice and tidy and nice in here for lighting it. A bit of a ceremony. It's been something I've looked forward to for a very long time, so I might as well make it a special moment. Really gonna have to do something with the back door soon. I hate the way they're looking, considering everything else is coming along so well. And that door. <laughs> you forget because you have the doors open during the day. Anyway, the point is, I've got washing up to do, a kettle full of water, and a burner to heat it with. So it's time to put this bad boy on. Quite excited. And it's freezing in here, and everyone's feeling a little bit damp. There's proper like fog outside, so the air's really moist. I'm gonna put the burner for its test. See if we can warm the place up and dry it out. But yeah, without further ado, let's fire up the burner. Oh no. Slight delay. Can you see that? <coughs> That's not going to start a fire particularly well. There's a centimetre of water on the bottom of it. Right, well I'll need to get that out first, obviously. By the way, I'm just burning like scrap wood. It's all the kind of crap we've been cutting off. While building the van, I've just been kind of chucking under there. Here we go. Fully just blast it with lots of air until that flue gets warm. You have no idea how happy that makes me feel. Hopefully, I'll also feel warm soon. <laughs> That's my new favourite TV show. What a place to warm your hands as well. Oh, so many benefits to having a log burner. But the biggest one is heat and water. Just be able to take that kettle, fill it up in the river, and bang it on the top and have hot water. Every time the fire's on, I'll put water on. There's no reason not to. At some point, I'm gonna have to wash dishes, or I might want a cup of tea. It might not be boiling, but it'll be warm, and then put it on there. It won't take long to boil at all. You might have noticed my whiskey just in. I'm gonna crack that bottle tonight. As a celebration, I'm gonna sit and watch some TV, drink some whiskey, chill by the fire. I will earn rest. I've absolutely loaded it up now. Let's see if we can get some heat in here. It is warming up slowly. It's crap wood as well, obviously. It's like plywood and scraps. Uh, they're also a bit damp because all the water that had come down the flue went into there was dribbling out of the legs because they're bolted through and it's dribbled down onto this surface and it went down into the wood store. So yeah, that's probably why this isn't combusting as quickly as you'd expect because a lot of it's actually wet. <laughs> Which isn't great, but I'll put some proper wood in it shortly. It's not quite the romantic first light you'd expect. Um, I totally forgot, but the instructions that came with that said that it will smoke a lot when you first light it, because that's how the paint sets. So I've just had the flu doing it, because I sprayed it with that heatproof spray paint, and the stove's been doing it, and it stinks. It smells like fucking chemicals. The smoke alarm was going off. And now I've had to get out of the van. It's less now, but you can still see it. That's not coming out of the fire, it's coming off the fire. Hopefully I can get back in soon. <laughs> so the fire has finally stopped smoking, at least I think it has. Uh, I've got some vegetarian haggis on there, and I've got my tatties boiling, and I'm just gonna have it with gravy. But I'm also gonna treat myself to a bit of whiskey. Anyway, this is me signing off for the night. I've got my smoke alarm and CO2 detector down near my head. Uh, that'll keep me safe during the night. But I'll be shutting that down before I go to bed anyway. When you turn the dial to like kill the air intake, uh, it completely kills the fire almost immediately. It's really good as well because it means it'll keep charcoals there for in the morning, which makes it a lot easier to start the fire again. Mm -hmm.